people get sick? The Bible gives three reasons. First one, let's look at spiritual. Write the text down, but we'll, do, we'll just do Numbers 12, verses 5 through 10. Write all the text down, but turn your Bibles to the book of Numbers, chapter 12, and we're going to look at verses 5 through 10. Why is it that people get sick anyhow? By the way, why is it that Christians get sick? Because sometimes you have to ask yourself, well, wait a minute, if you, you, know, if you and I are the children of God and we're supposedly under all this quote-unquote favor, why is it then that God's people are getting sick? What's going on? So I want you to notice what the Bible says in Numbers chapter 12. And we're going to look at verses 5 through 10. We're about to see that one of the reasons why many of us are sick is because of spiritual reasons. And in Numbers chapter 12, you'll see this real clear. Numbers chapter 12, if you're there, say amen. I know you're writing this down, but let's go ahead. I don't want to take up a lot of your time. Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. Let's get this verse 5. If you're there, say amen. amen. Let's read it together. The Bible says, And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. So let's get the backdrop before we do that. Between verses 1 and 4, Aaron and Miriam kind of slapped five together and said, you know, we, we're, we're bad-mouthing Moses. You know, and here it is that they're bad-mouthing Moses. Why God got to talk to them? Why can't he talk to them? You know, and so on and so forth. So as a result of doing that, God comes and pays them a visit. And that's what's happening right here in verse 5. So it says, And the Lord came down to the pillar of the cloud, stood in the door of the tabernacle, tabernacle, called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. Now look at how God talks to them. It says in verse 6, And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, boy, I, boy it, it's scary when you get rebuked by God. Because just the way he starts, you know what I'm saying? It's like just the way he just starts the rebuke. Look at how God is kind of teaching them as he's preparing to discipline them. He says, and he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in how? A vision and will speak unto him in what? A dream. Then it goes on. He says, my servant Moses is not so. He said, who is faithful in all mine house? With him will I speak how? Did God and Moses have a special relationship? Yes. You better believe it. And it goes on to say, even apparently and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then? Oh, man. Mm, I can only imagine what Miriam went through. It says, wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And look at what the Bible says. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous. White as snow, and Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Now, is leprosy a real disease? Yes, yes it is. But if Miriam would have went to the doctor, and let's say the doctor followed the scriptures and wanted to ascertain the cause, would the doctor have found it? If he would have just looked in the medical books? No. no way. Why? Because it wasn't a physical problem. It was a spiritual problem. Brothers and sisters, do you understand that gossip can bring on high blood pressure? Do you understand that gossip can bring on heart disease? Do you understand that gossip can bring on cancer? Gehazi, the Bible says, was greedy. Remember the story of Gehazi, right? He went and, you know, he wanted to go ahead and get the money. The prophet said, no, don't worry, let him go, let him take his money. Gehazi was like, all right. But as soon as the prophet's gone, Gehazi said, man, I'm going to get that money. And he went, and here it is, Gehazi wanted to go ahead and get the money anyhow. And what happened? God struck him leprous. So that means that it's not only gossip, but also greed can bring on sickness and disease. Remember when Jesus healed the man at the pool of Bethesda? And here it is that Jesus heals the man. He says, do you want to get well? The man says, well, every time I try to get in the pool, you know, somebody else jump in in front of me. And Jesus bypasses all those excuses. He says, look, pick up your mat and walk. The man gets up and he goes ahead and he starts walking. He's happy. He's praising God. Jesus meets him later on and Jesus says, good. He says, you're well now. He says, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. So what brought his disease on? Sin. So here it is that literally we are going around trying to eat enough herbs and drink enough water and get all the exercise and we're doing everything else we can instead of following the counsel of the judgment hour and afflicting your souls and searching your heart to find out if there be any wicked thing in you. And we can pop pills and we can take herbs and herbal teas all day long. But if we're living a life of sin, we can have disease in our lives. And it will not go away until we put that thing in check through the grace of God. Amen?
So one reason why many of God's people are sick is not so much just physical, but also spiritual. Now, of course, with physical, we have Ezekiel 16 and verse 49. Let's turn there very quickly. We're having Bible study. Ezekiel 16 and verse 49. In Ezekiel 16 and verse 49, you can write down the other text, but Ezekiel 16 49 is key. In Ezekiel 16 and verse 49, you know, if I ask people, typically when I ask individuals, what brought on the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, the people in Sodom and Gomorrah? And a lot of times people are quick to go to, oh, well, they committed sodomy. And uh, you'd be amazed at what sodomy really is. You know, um, can't go into it in detail here, but it's much deeper than just simply homosexuality. But nevertheless, Ezekiel 16 and verse 49 shows us the sins of Sodom. And this is what brought on destruction. Did you know that our physical habits can literally bring destruction in our lives? Ezekiel 16 and verse 49. If you're there, say amen. See, y'all so busy writing. Y'all should turn to the text first, and then you write later. Ezekiel 16 and verse 49. Notice what the Bible says here. It's important that we understand this because the sins of Sodom go much deeper than simply the fact that there was homosexual activity taking place. It's much deeper than that. In fact, when you find this out, I believe some of us might make some lifestyle changes. In Ezekiel 16 and verse 49, I want you to see what the Bible says. This is, and, and, and it's amazing because the Bible lists it as iniquity. Iniquity is, is, is worse than just messing up. Iniquity is like pre-planned, premeditated sin. You know, you ever heard of premeditated murder? You know, somebody, they, they weren't just in the heat of it and then the guy stabbed somebody, you know, he didn't plan on doing it. But premeditated means they thought about it, they planned it out, they strategized, they conjectured, they conjectured and did everything, and then they committed the act. That's iniquity. It's pre-planned, premeditated. Look at what the Bible says in Ezekiel 16 and verse 49. It says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. So what you're about to read is the list. What does it tell us? Pride fullness of bread and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy they were haughty and committed abomination before me therefore I took them away as I saw good did you notice on the list that fullness of bread was one of them fullness of bread is gluttony it's gluttony Gluttony in the Bible was dealt with very severely. In fact, when you read Deuteronomy 21, it talks about parents who had children who were gluttons and what God told them should happen to those children. Thank the Lord that we don't do that today. I mean, for real, because a lot of us be locked up under this. Under, uh, you know, and in, the, in those days, that was when it was a theocracy. You could do that. You could literally take the children to the elders and say, look, we've tried everything with our children. They won't listen. We, we, we've tried everything. We've tried getting them to obey. We've chastened. We've instructed. We did this, that, and the other. And the Bible literally says that after you've chastened, after you instructed and all these things, and your child is still a glutton anyhow, the Bible says bring them to the elders. And literally it says the elders would stone the children to death. And it says that this was a lesson to Israel. See, God don't play with sin. We like to play tag with sin. But that's not God. God is too holy for that. God understands how dangerous and how deadly sin is. And that's why he gave such a severe counsel like that. But brothers and sisters, gluttony is a tremendous sin. And you'll find that gluttony and drunkenness are on the same level. Amen. So the same way drunkenness can bring on all the different sick you know, diseases and all those things, gluttony can do the same thing. So here it is that not only can we suffer from disease as a result of spiritual activity, but physical and finally, God's opportunity to glorify himself you will find that some people will suffer from sickness and disease not because they've done anything wrong but because God wants to glorify himself. If you remember in John chapter 9 you had the man who was born blind and the disciples said, Master, who committed sin? Was it his parents or was it him? That's the reason why he's blind. Jesus said, neither his parents, neither him but that the glory of God may be made manifest in him. And it was, wasn't it, when Jesus healed him. So here it is that you will find that these are typically one of the three reasons why sickness disease is running rampant in the world today. It's either because of spiritual violation, violation of spiritual laws, violation of physical laws, or God is seeking an opportunity to glorify himself. Don't be too quick to choose number three. Because a lot of people like to make an excuse, oh, I'm just obedient, I do everything right. You know, so, so God is doing this to glorify himself. And they, brothers and sisters, search yourselves first before you take such a bold statement. Okay? Did you notice the blind man didn't say it? It was an outsider who had to say it. 